Let's take a look at the greatest common factor and the least common multiple, or GCF and LCM. Luke is making trail mix for his hike tomorrow. He has three cups of candy-coated peanuts and four cups of granola. How many bags can he make without having any ingredients left over, but with every bag having the exact same ratio of peanuts to granola? All right, so in this case, when they say how many bags can he make, we want to find the maximum or most number of bags he can make. So essentially, we're saying what is the greatest number of bags he can make? And if he doesn't want to have any ingredients left over, that means it has to divide evenly by three and four, right? To have nothing left over, three and four would have to be factors of however much he's using. So essentially, we need to find the greatest common factor between three and four. Okay, well, three is a prime number, meaning the only things that go into three are three and one. Okay, well, for four, you could say two times two, or you could say four times one. So the greatest common factor is actually one. So he can make one bag that's in a three to four ratio of peanuts to granola. A club has six girls and eight boys as members. The president wants to break the club into groups with each group containing the same combination of girls and boys. The president also wants to make sure that no one is left out. What is the greatest number of groups the president can make? Okay, well, the fact that they're asking us about the greatest is a hint, right? Greatest, and then if no one's left out, meaning no one's left over after these groups, it has to be divisible by six and eight, meaning common factors. Or six and eight need to be divisible by the number of groups. Okay, so if we look at six, okay, well, what are the numbers that go into six? We could say one times six. We could say two times three, right? So one, six, two, and three are all factors of six. If we take a look at eight, well, we could say one times eight. We could say four times two. So the greatest common factor or the biggest number that's a factor of both six and eight is two. So that means he could make two groups. And this should make sense if we divide both of these numbers by two Right? He's got two groups that each have three girls and four boys, and then nobody would be left over. So the greatest common factor tells us he can make two groups without leaving anyone out. Caleb is making chocolate chip blueberry pancakes. He has eight chocolate chips and nine blueberries. How many identical pancakes can he make without having any leftover chocolate chips or blueberries? Okay, so again, when we say how many identical, we want to know the most pancakes he can make. And without having any leftover, we're, that, that's a hint that we're looking here for the greatest common factor. Okay, well, if you look at the factors of eight, right, eight divides evenly by one, two, and four, right? We can say, and eight, because you can say one times eight, you can say two times four. Nine divides evenly by one, three, and nine, because you can say one times nine or three times three. So notice the greatest common factor of eight and nine is only one. So that means he can only make one identical pancake that has eight chocolate chips and nine blueberries in it. A teacher is trying to divide up her class into the maximum number of groups that have the same girl to boy ratio. 
How many groups can she make with two boys and three girls? Okay, well, maximum is another word for the greatest. So we want to know the greatest number of groups she can make. And if they all have to have the same ratio, then we're looking for a common factor. So again, we're looking for the GCF. Now, two and three are both prime numbers. That means two times one is the only set of factors for two, and three times one are the only set of factors for three. So the greatest common factor here is just one, so that means the only way she can do this is to make just one group with two boys and three girls. Kevin, the gym teacher, is splitting up teams at school. He has four boys and nine girls. How many teams can he make without leaving anyone out while maintaining a consistent gender ratio? Okay, well this is just like the last problem. We want to make sure that there's nothing left over, so it needs to divide evenly. Both of those numbers need to divide evenly by the number of teams. So again, we're looking for the greatest common factor. Okay, well what's the greatest common factor between 4 and 9? Well 4, you can say 4 times 1 or 2 times 2, so 1, 2, and 4 are factors of 4. For 9, well you could say 1 times 9 or you can say 3 times 3, so 1, 9, and 3 are our factors for 9. Okay, so the only number that's a factor of both is 1. So that means there's only one way for him to make this team without leaving anybody out. Right, he's got one team of all four boys and nine girls. Joshua is, is a camp coordinator and is assembling first aid kits. He has four bandages and three alcohol swabs. Then how many first aid kits can he make without having any leftover materials and each first aid kit being the same? Okay, so again, we want to know the greatest number of kits he can make. So we're thinking greatest common factor. Okay, well, if you look at the factors of two, I'm sorry, of four, you can say two times two or one times four. So one, two, and, and four are all factors of four. If you look at three, three is a prime number, so the only factors of three are one times three. So the greatest common factor between four and three is just one. So there's only one way for him to make, or he can only make one first aid kit that contains all four bandages and all three alcohol swabs. Logan is making Christmas gifts for his friends. He has seven boxes of chocolate and three small toys. He wants to use up all of the materials while still keeping each present exactly the same. How many gifts can he make up? Okay, well this again would be a greatest common factor because however many gifts he's making up, seven and three both need to divide evenly by those to make sure that nothing is left over. And we want to know the most presents he can make. Well, seven is a prime number, meaning the only factors of seven are one times seven. And three is also a prime number, meaning the only factors of three are one times three. So this means he can only make one present that has all seven boxes of chocolate and all three small toys. At the hospital, Darren has every five days off and his friend has every four days off. And how many days will they have a day off together? Okay, well, if you think about this problem, this is a little different because every five days, Darren's gonna have a day off. So that means after five days, he has a day off, after 10 days, he has a day off, after 15 days, he has a day off, right? Notice these are the multiples of five. For Avery, after four days, he has a day off. After eight days, he has a day off. After 12 days, he has a day off. These are the multiples of four. So in this question, we need to look for the least common multiple or the smallest number that's a multiple of both five and four. Okay, well, we already wrote out the first few multiples of five, right? Five, 10, 15, next would be 20, and then 25. 
and I'm going to put dot, 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 right? It's going to keep going. Let's see if we can expand Avery's list a little. We know 4, 8, 12. Okay, well, 4 more than that would be 16, and 4 more than that would be 20. So notice the smallest number that's common to both lists, or the least common multiple, would be 20. So that means in 20 days, Darren and Avery both have the same day off. Alexander found the same number of grapes and cherries in the fridge this morning. If Caden eats grapes in handfuls of three and cherries in handfuls of two, what is the smallest number of each fruit that Caden had to have eaten? Okay, well, smallest number is a hint here that we're looking for the least common multiple, which makes sense. If he's eating grapes in handfuls of three, well, he's either going to eat three, six, nine, twelve, and so on grapes. And if he's eating cherries in handfuls of two, well, it's going to be a multiple of two, right? If he eats one handful two, if he eats two handfuls four, and so on, six, eight, ten. So we want to find the least common multiple between three and two. Okay, well, to find the multiples of three, let's count by three. Three, six, nine, twelve. And I'm going to put dot, 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 right? It's going to keep going. Let's look at our multiples of two. Multiples of two, two four, six, eight, 10, 12. Okay, and I don't need to keep going because I can already see that six, was the smallest number that was a multiple of both three and four. So we can say our LCM is six, or the smallest number of each fruit he would have eaten was six. Daniel can play every three days, and Cameron can play every four days. How many days until they can play together? Okay, well, this is just like the day off problem we saw. Daniel can play every three days. So after three days, he can play. After the sixth day, he can play. Three days later, after the ninth day, he can play. After the twelfth day, he can play, and so on. Cameron can play every four days. So he can play after the fourth day, Four days later, the eighth day, four days later, the twelfth day, and so on. So this would be a least common multiple question, right? We're counting by those numbers, which are the multiples of three and four. And we want to know what's the shortest number of days until they can play together. So that's the least number. That's a common multiple. So after 12 days, they can both play on the same day.